a lot of us maybe a late night, right? Um, so it's awesome that you were able to make it. So we're just kind of go through what the demo slam is, and, and then you're going to have the opportunity if you want to present to someone one to begin a few of the guidelines of the demo slam. Sure. So how a demo slam works is you have two minutes to present an idea. It could be an activity, it could be a strategy that you need to Anything you want, <laughs> anything you use in your class, hit him, right? Hit him. It can be anything that you want and that you're going to share. So, you present it, you have two minutes. If you're done before two minutes is over, you get to oh, slam yourself and you all go one, two, three, slam. If you go over two minutes, the computer will beep and we can slam you. So let's try that together, ready? One, two, two three, three, slam! You actually have to yell slam. Okay, let's try one more time. One, two, three, slam! Yes, got it. Anything you want to add? Um, also, if you have any type of um, uh, visuals or any type of music, we have speakers and we have a projector. Um, so if you want to share that on the projector for everyone to see, uh, we have that available to you also. But it doesn't have to be anything. It can, it can just be you sharing an idea uh, verbally. And if you're interested in presenting, we're going to have a line of people over here by Jonathan and by me. Seats there. As he was saying, there's going to be a doc, and what we're going to do with that doc is it's going to become the resource document after this, and you're going to have access to that. We'll upload it to the Shape America website, and um, this Periscope will also be uploaded uh, where you can have a permanent link and you can refer back to it, or anyone that's watching can refer back to it. Yeah, so Shape America's Periscope right now is that a go to live feed. We're all good. Right, you guys are elementary ed. All right, elementary ed, uh, one of the toughest things is getting one ball per kid, right? Because we want to eliminate the wait time, increase physical, uh, physical activity, time of repetition. So the all funds under the new shape standard of um, fundamental mo mo uh, mo motor skills and movement, right? So uh, for my second and third grade curriculum, uh, striking unit with implement, um, how many of you guys have teeth and do like a striking unit? Okay, those are heavy. Those bases, they're not ideal for kids carrying around. So what do you do? Uh, how many of you guys have the cafeteria milk crates? How many of you guys steal milk crates and put your equipment in? Yes, me too. That's okay. Just ask the milkman. I put a, a milk crate, a cone, book ball, a bat, and a poly spot in, and I make 12 of them, right? Uh, one T for every two kids. Kids carry it out. They set it up. Flip the milk crate up. T, uh, the cone on top, ball on top, poly spot for visual to stand to measure up and then they hit more repetition. Now you got kids uh, with high repetition and fielding and striking all at the same time, all right? One, two, three, seven. Okay, I'll go next. Oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. It's early in the morning, huh? Right. <laughs> I gotta wake myself up here. So, <laughs> so I do these things in my health class and PE class um, where I, I do, I, I make raps about health or, or things related to the topic of health and PE. Um, if you're a PE teacher, you might find uh, the brain exercise rap help helpful. If you're a health teacher, I got a whole album you can listen to. But there's a YouTube channel um, that you can check out all the scholarly raps I call them. So I'm going to do a little bit of the hand wash rap for you. Um, you can use this through K through 12, really, or beyond, even you adults here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and perform it if you don't mind. Okay, so let's crank that volume up. Okay, so here we go. It's a hand wash rack. You guys ready? Just go like this. Here we go. Wash baby, wash baby, one, two, three, four. Wash baby, wash baby, one, two, three. Wash baby, wash baby, one, two. Wash baby, wash baby, one. It's called the hand washer. Really, really simple to do. Put two hands together, ain't really nothing new. It's tried and true. Avoid bugs like influenza. From a tent to lend you nasty germs. Time to learn. It's five simple steps. Wet leather scrub is dry and yet people forget this song help remind you of one of a kind scholarly rapper man kinda keeping hands clean and a hand hygiene avoid getting sick limit jerks know what I mean got it okay well here's how to help me 
pass the message on, so we all stay healthy. Here we go. All you gotta do is do the scrub, 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 and a dub, dub. Just wash your hands. You can sing it. Do the scrub, 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 and a dub, dub. Just wash your hands. All you gotta do is do the scrub, 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 and a dub, dub. Just wash your hands. All you gotta do is do the scrub, 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 and a dub, dub. Just wash your hands. Wash, baby, wash, baby, one, two, three, four. Wash, baby, wash, baby, one, two, three. Wash, baby, wash, baby, one, two. Wash, baby, wash, baby, one. It's so easy to do. Do the little things too. Protect me and you. Now let's go through. When you wash hands up before you eat food, touch garbage, throw it out, before you clean a wound. Touch a toilet, pick up after a pet. When you blow your nose, a cough must not forget. Prevent the spread of germs. You know what I mean? Proper hand washing like you're doing yourself next week. When you wash your hands, free. I'm just glad you understand. <laughs> skill-related fitness, one of the components that I, I work with my students with, with one half pool noodle, is agility. So you can almost use these lines if you want to join me, but I'm going to kind of walk you through, not really walk you, I'm going to make you move, but make you go through kind of this agility progression. So you'd start, if you look at these little rows on the carpet, and make about a half a pool noodle. So here's what I want you to do first, it's a shuffle, and then I want you to touch with your outside foot, shuffle, touch, Shuffle, touch. Yeah. Ready? Okay. Go. So shuffle, touch, outside foot, touch. Okay. So after they've done this for a while, now we're gonna shuffle, pass, touch inside. Shuffle, pass, touch inside. Now, agility is side to side movement, turn sideways, pretend that your noodle is right there, side to side jumps over the noodle, go. Now, if you can't jump, step over, touch, step over, touch. Alright, face back this way. Start at half, with half your foot off there. Now, I want you to shuffle, outside hand. Shuffle. Outside hand, go. All right, you probably figure out what's next. Now I want you to shuffle, inside hand. I have about 45 at a time elementary students, and I'm always afraid they're gonna hit each other with the paddles, God forbid, I don't know why, but they always want to take their swords or something. So, uh, we came up with an activity last week. I love the rubber critters, so I use, use them a lot. So, volleyball nets, I'll call them about five, six. So I had about five, six off the ground, uh, throwing it across my gym, and I had about 10 paddles on each side, and the reason for that is so they don't hit each other. And I used various size skater skin balls for them to strike. And I had about 12 critters. So <clears throat> at the beginning, it was kind of slow for them to get going. But once the first few kids have hit their, uh, the ball, uh, they really got moving. So here's how they did divide my kids in half. Uh, first 10 have a ball in their paddle. And either uh, working on the forearm stroke or a uh, underhand serve, they got to hit the ball over net. After they hit the ball over the net, they took off running around the net, grabbed a critter from their side, ran back to their side, and put the critter in their pile. By the time they got back, there was an empty paddle. And it spaced everybody out, so I didn't have to worry about them hitting each other. And it was a very fast-paced game. I gave about two minutes, stopped it, counted the critters, counted critters, whichever side won, cool, divided it back out equally, and we played another round. It was very quick, and I felt comfortable using the paddles and working on it, striking and they spaced in the gym space and they didn't hurt each other. So, one, 
two, three, represents a different kind of exercise. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> so, Tabata is going to sing a song, five, 10 seconds to rest. Four, skater. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> Cheryl, what app are you using? What? What app are you using to run music? Um, and that's Tabata Kids. He was here the last couple years at Nationals. Oh, don't oh, worry. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize. Oh, I didn't realize. So before we get on to the next one, if you've already done an uh, activity or, or shared something, please 
come type it into our resource document so that we can share this with everybody. So if you've been up and you presented on something, please, if you've shared anything, it's right up here on the computer. Yeah, just put the type in, put a link no. within as well. Be great. Yeah. Whatever you're ready. Okay, so um, one of the shape grade level outcomes is jumping and landing with two feet for, for height. Uh, this is just one thing, I call it a junkyard dog. We do it with a, as part of a warm up. You can do it as many times as you want, the, the kids love it, and it's, it, you can modify it. So if I can't jump that high, I just push his arms down. And what I'm gonna do is I'm jumping over, over, over. He's gonna roll to his belly, jump over. He's gonna go up in a tight position. The kids really like that part. And then so I could we can then he would go back to sitting. I'd do that another two or three times, and then I'd switch and I'd be the one down there. And he would go. It's just uh, one of those ways that you can work on the, the critical elements of you know swinging your arms, jumping, and landing with both feet, and uh, it's just like crawling under each other. So that's pretty much it. Three, two, one. one. So what will happen is partner A, I would have them know they'd understand. Partner A is blue, partner B is orange. When your color is on the board, that's when you are doing the exercise. So they usually have a station here, I just chose a quick exercise. So what will happen is I'm going to get it ready to start, it'll take five seconds. Then it'll say up next jumping jacks for partner A, so you'll go for 15 seconds. Partner B, you're just going to kind of rest and take your time. Then there's going to be a five second switch and it'll show orange, which means partner B will be going. So the timer would start, it'll say four, it's gonna start beeping, and so then it's now blue, so we'll have partner A, they're doing jumping jacks, and partner B is just kind of taking their time, oh, they're just taking their time and relaxing. Usually there's a beep, you can't really hear right now. And now there's a five second switch, so usually you're using equipment where they have to get on and off the equipment. Then what will happen is partner B will go ahead and now they're doing their 15 seconds. Usually I'll do the intervals for maybe a minute, a minute and a half. Let them get as many reps in as they can, and then they get a chance to take a break. And so when they go back, I usually have them on heart rate monitors. They can review their heart rate, look at it, and be like, this is when I spike, this is when I stopped. Two, one, slam!
That's all I got. I don't have another time for the other one. Everyone, uh, Jamie Hitchner from Frederick County, Maryland. Good to see everyone this morning. I'm going to do an activity with you called Prints in the Snow. It's a uh, static balance type of activity. I noticed with grade level outcomes being uh, introduced, a lot more with educational gymnastics are involved. So, this is a place where we've got um, no equipment, no beams, no bars, no traditional type of equipment that we associate with gymnastics. This may be a, a great activity for you. It really allows us, it's a visual as you see posted up here. I'm going to ask you, as we fly through 13 or so, however many time limit slides we have, uh, please give me this symbol, like feed me more, because we're ready to go to the next slide. So students have to interpret what's going on. I would ask that you use gymnastic mats, because some of the things that we may not do here this morning, but as we get more complicated, more complex, students have to interpret what they see. We don't want any fear of falling, so we have some balance uh, activities for you. So we have to just interpret what we have. So if you find a personal space with me, interpret what we have. Easy, right? What's going on? Standing still. Standing still. Two feet on the ground, two points of balance. Orientation. Take a look at the arrows, the orientation. Feet are forward or backward? Anybody in the room can do one forward and one backward. I don't think so. Okay. We got that? We're good? Feed me more on that? Next one. And then as these are easy, we challenge kids, what are you doing with the top half of your body? Can we make a pose? All types of creativity. We good. Ready to roll. Okay, please interpret for me. Again, discovery education, experimental learning, experiential learning, what do we have there? Okay, hands down. Feet flat. Feet more. And three points of balance. There you go, good. Great creativity, you can see around the room. Next. Four, three, three two, two, one. I'll share the whole document with these folks and then we can get it out there. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. All right, my name is Bart. I teach elementary PD down in Iowa. One thing I struggled with was assessing standard four. Anybody else struggle with assessing standard four? No? Okay, you guys are experts, so I'm going to talk to each one of you guys after this. Because I'm the only one that struggles apparently with standard four. So in our school, we're a positive behavior intervention strategy school, or PBIS school, if you're familiar with that. We have be respectful, be responsible, and be safe. Those are the three rules I have in PD. Looking at the GLO criteria with Shape America, basically I can lump all that into be respectful, be responsible, and be safe. I use Class Dojo to help assess that. Anybody here know about Class Dojo? Yes. All right, a lot of us do, which is good. So when the kids come into PD, they are automatically given three points. The points for being safe, responsible, and respectful. It's their job to keep the points through their behavior choices. They usually get a warning if they're not, and then they would lose a point. The nice thing about Class Dojo is you can send home a letter, parents can sign up. They get a weekly email about how Johnny or Susie has done in terms of their behavior. At the end of the month, I go ahead and it can give me a percentage and I equate that percentage to a rubric and that's how I assess standard four. That's something I struggled with. I'm really excited about Class Dojo and there's lots of potential. Um, so I'm excited to pick all your brains because everybody in, on, on other methods, it looks like you guys are all experts compared to me on standard four. So Class Dojo is a great one. It's a free app, um, parent involvement. There's already PDFs. There's online things, maybe some other teachers in elementary already do it. Um, if you latch on to them, reach out to them. So that's just one way that I assess uh, standard four that I've done this year. It's what I'm going to keep going in the future. So again, classdojo.com, it's free. As we all know, as teachers, we like free. So, three, two, one. Okay, so one thing that I was really struggling with uh, when I first started teaching this year was tracking students when I do a sport education unit, tracking different teams and tracking where they are based on how many wins they have. And I was so sick and tired of doing it by paper and I had to know there was a better way. So one day during a testing day when I was proctoring a practice ACT and they were sitting there like angels for the first time ever, 
I was able to mess around on Google Sheets for a little bit, and I was able to create this thing called a tournament tracker. And what I do is, so I just finished up a, uh, I just finished up a badminton, or no, pickleball, uh, pickleball tournament with my students. And this is my students for my second hour in eight days. And what I did was I keep track of how many wins they had, how many losses they had, and what this would do is I'd automatically, um, it would be automatically added into the E row right here. Um, I don't know what the world's top yet. It would automatically add up wins and losses here. It would divide then for win percentage, and that's how I would base it. So it's really nice. If you look closely, like let's say Jermaine Franco, let's say they got, uh, let's say they got one more win, so they had seven wins. You'll notice. I'll type in, oops, type in seven right here. Click check, and this will automatically go. Since they have, uh, they have zero losses, this will automatically go seven. And what it'll do is it'll then be tough to see, but it'll have a winning percentage here as well too, and their winning percentage is a hundred percent. And that's how I do my standings based on this order. So after each round. What I do is I highlight, I select all of the uh, all of the areas here, and I can actually order based on who did where. So if somebody jumped somebody in the standings, I can reorder it based on the number that's displayed in there. Great tool, it saves me a lot of time. I don't have to do as much math, don't have to read as much or anything. If you're interested, I can totally share this with you. I have no problem doing that. I just have to work out a few extra, a few extra things with it. They should be good to go. So if you want it, go ahead and let me know. Three, two, one. Alright, thanks for sharing. I looked at the videos, I watched all the videos, I then organized it with 80 plus playlists for access for all you guys. My thing is always get tons of handouts, always get tons of things. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a huge reading fan, but I just always like the videos. It's always there. I've always, uh, it's just easy for me to access. So, if you type in Ryan Armstrong on YouTube, okay, it takes you straight to my channel. Uh, if you click on playlists, okay, I have a few videos of stuff I'm doing with my B program, but uh, if you click on playlists, you can see I have this home and everything. If you're doing net and wall games, you click net and wall games. It's going to take you to net and wall games activities. If you're a K-6 elementary teacher, you click K-6, you see 250,300 elementary games. All right? Uh, it's all ran there for you. There's a great resource uh, for quick activity things, and then maybe the two you know which one to accomplish in your uh, class during the day. So as you can see, just some of the things I have new IT scoreboards, uh, TTFU, um, teaching stairs based grading. I mean, pretty much anything you're thinking about is on here. So, uh, Ryan Armstrong or youtube.com slash Armstrong PE. That's my YouTube channel. And yeah, that's what I got. Three, two, one. Thanks, Ryan. Great. Okay. Sound right. Sound right. Sound right. Sound right. Sound right. Sound right. Okay, I'm Mark from Illinois, Coach Fall, if everyone does, so many familiar faces. I like to get my students uh, to understand the four components of fitness. But rather than give them a list or a definition, I post to the four corners of the gym, obviously the four components of fitness. And then we do a small sample size of an exercise. For instance, we'll do three push-ups. You have five seconds to figure out which component of fitness you just addressed. Get there as quickly as you can. The people that are correct, we let them know. The people that are incorrect, we let them know, hey, hurry over to this corner. And now to reinforce that component of fitness, we do that same small sample size of the exercise. Again, in this particular case, three push-ups, and then we go on to another one. I use this at the middle school, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, as a, a quick warm-up activity before we get into something. Three, two, one. Yeah, <laughs> 
able-bodied peers, typical peers, peers matched up with differently abled students, came up with in a way to get everybody at our events moving and dancing in the bleacher. So it's a bleacher dance, right? Not a lot of footwork, a lot of arms. Um, and if you want to learn more about how I do that, come to my session at 2.15, let's dance. It goes big fish. Repeat after me, sorry, I should say that, give you direction. Little fish, do everything twice. Big fish, little fish. Cardboard, box, cardboard, box. Okay, here we go. Big fish, little fish, big fish, little fish, cardboard box, cardboard box. Then heavy shopping, use your oblique. Heavy shopping, heavy shopping. Looking through my wardrobe is the next part. Looking through my wardrobe, looking through my wardrobe. Put the four together, starting with big fish. Ready, set, here we go. Big fish, little fish, big fish, little fish. Cardboard box, cardboard box. Heavy shopping, heavy wardrobe. Looking through my wardrobe, looking through my wardrobe. Last section, climb up the flagpole, climb up the flagpole. And then you have to jump wide and be really loud. Bang it on the window, bang it on the window. So the whole bleacher is doing that, it's really, really cool, right? So let's try that last part. Ready, set, here we go. Climb up the flagpole, climb up the flagpole, bang it on the window, bang it on the window, and then just repeat it. We try it, we try the music for 30 seconds. You can fast forward. Let's go on the track. We can do it. Just do your point. Ready, set, here we go. Big fish, little fish, big fish, little fish. Cardboard box, cardboard box. Heavy shopping, heavy shopping. Look at the reward job, look at the reward job. Climb up the flagpole. Again, bang it on the window. Cardboard box, heavy shopping, wardrobe. Look at the wardrobe. Let's play pump. Bang it on the window. Bang it on the window. Cardboard box. Cardboard box. Heavy shopping. Heavy shopping. Cardboard box. Should shape my. Or a unipod. I'm with you. Or a goat. I'm not trying to do this. Or a goat All right. So I'm from California, <laughs> but I actually don't live by the ocean. So I like incorporating. I know weird, but I like incorporating imagination. Something where kids can exercise, but also kind of have imagination engaged. So it's, they're not exercising; they're having fun. So we're gonna do a little surfing right now. So if you're on your board, and you're down here on the ground, and you're swimming out to a wave, do you hear pop up? You're gonna pop up on your board, and be surfing. If I say, hey, 10, drop low. If I say switch, switch waves, paddle out, switch, wipe out, back down to the ground, backstroke, and shark. 
quick swim. Ready? Yep. Swim out to a wave. Pop up. Switch. Switch. Hang tight. Switch. Switch. Wipe out. Shark.
Once you find a mushroom, you go back to normal size, and we're going to skip. If you don't find a mushroom, oh man, you got to go try to find another one. We'd love to give you another kind of seat. Okay, thumbs up if you understand. Okay, raise your hand if you're Bowser. All right, ready, set, go. Watch out for Bowser. There we go. Oh. So this is what we're doing. It is a great one for a brain break or for a warm up. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of the song before, "Bring Sally Up, Bring Sally Down." A great way to get students just kind of up and moving really quick if they're standing. Basically, whenever you hear the word "Bring Sally Down," you come down into a squat position and you hold it until you hear "Bring Sally Up." We talk about the idea of keeping the knees behind the toes. You challenge them to really hold it for as long as the song's going. So if you want to come out and participate, we'll be listening to the song as soon as you. Here, bring Sally down and go down.
Demo Slam champion right now. Toilet tag, three, two, one, 
Oh, you're on. Uh, three, two, one, clap. That's another one. Three, two, one, clap. 
Um, also, I'd like someone, uh, so just from yesterday, one of the sessions is come down to one knee, and one come down, four, four people in, or five people forward, then down on one knee like this right here, playing groups. I like that better than completely sitting down. This uh, something I picked up. Let's see, uh, I'm trying to think of something else I have. Oh, yeah, the uh, two claps of the Ricky players also from, I think, Jim Delano. I love that one. So if the student does a cool skill, a cool question, something that I just like, oh, that's awesome. Two claps to the Ricky players, so it just goes, two claps, yeah, woo, you know, just celebrate, celebrate that kid, you know, because that's something we need to do a little bit more. So that's all I got on management stuff. Hey, could have you here? Matt, you gotta get in. Oh, Naomi, you gotta meet Keith sometime. Yes, we <laughs> That's Naomi, Keith. Okay, can you guys see everybody? No. <laughs> There's way too many people. <laughs> I'm in landscape mode. Let's do this. Hold on. Whoa. Whoa. See the two poles behind you guys? No one get beyond those poles. A couple people come lay in the front. So you guys on the very end need okay. to get in. We ready? Okay, we're gonna do a slam. Yeah, ready? Everybody slam. Three, two, two one, slam. Get it? One more, up in. One more. <laughs> you in the pink, you're not in it. This is my demo slam, how to take a picture. 